And our next speaker is Dave Thermalai. He's from the University of Texas at Austin. And he's going to talk to us about interphase human chromosomes. Again, their dynamics. I want to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me here. Um, the, uh, the, the problem that I'm going to talk to you about is uh, concerns slow dynamics in, uh, in, in, in chromosomes, interface chromosomes. And it's linked to the structural diversity uh, of the organization itself that we've been hearing about both this morning and uh, uh, this afternoon. Um, the, uh, we haven't really thought about these problems for a very long time, uh, just last four years or so, maybe five years. And I'm going to tell you mostly about the work of this guy who just finished his uh, 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 PhD uh, just a couple of months ago. We saw this slide uh, yesterday uh, uh, from uh, Andy uh, Spakowitz uh, uh, and also subsequently by others uh, showing uh, partitioning of the chromosome into an inactive state, which is a heterochromatin and a new chromatin. And the, and the, on, this, on this bottom are images from Jave's lab uh, from this paper three years ago uh, where using uh, super resolution imaging uh, she was able to argue uh, that um, uh, she was able to show that the, there are large shape fluctuations, and on a scale of about uh, 100 to 250 to 500 nanometers, the uh, various epigenetic states uh, are, uh, have different shapes, with the active uh, 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 state being extended and perhaps undergoing large scale fluctuations, whereas the inactive state is much more compact, and, and then she also identified the repressed state. Um, so this is all indicated, roughly speaking, that the chromatin at all length scales is probably extremely dynamic, and that dynamics is, should be reflected in, in, in the organization itself, provided you did experiments on, len, on, 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 on single cells or with uh, high resolution imaging uh, gathering enough data. The, uh, the argument uh, that I'll make, in fact, more or less heuristically, although at the end, if I have time, I'll show you some details model of the kind that you've been hearing about, but which is different from the ones you've heard. These are single cell uh, high C maps. Uh, uh, there are many of them now in the last about half a dozen years or so. Uh, And, and I, I think it's chromosome two, and you can see that there are tremendous amount of variations from cell to cell, uh, and, and when you average them, of course, you get these beautiful maps uh, that, 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 uh, that uh, arrays uh, uh, certainly in 2014 uh, had measured with uh, tremendous accuracy, maybe one and a half to two kilobases. And you could see this in simulations as well, and that's what we heard from Jose this morning, and also Peter, that if you if you looked at the various fluctuations, I think it's apropos to say that these are highly fluctuating, perhaps on much long, not perhaps, on much longer time scales than, than for example, denatured state of proteins, as, as Peter was alluding to. Um, there is a puzzle that I want to tell you about, but not extensively, that goes to the heart of this heterogeneity. And, and, and this is... Uh, these are results of some experiments uh, that appeared just three months ago, and we were made aware of this when we, when our paper of ours under, was under review, when we were trying to resolve a paradox between fish measurements and and uh, and, and and high sea maps. So the fish, uh, the high sea maps, tells you on an average what's the pro probability of contact between two loci that are separated by some genomic distance. And we know that if you know the distribution of those distances, you could, in fact, calculate what that number should be, uh, provided you have some notion of what a cutoff for making a contact is. So generically, then, you would think that if the probability of contact is higher, uh, high, then the distance between them should be shorter, and that's our intuitive feeling uh, for, intuitive intuition for uh, what a contact is. 
And in fact, if you consider simple polymer chains, or even more complicated polymer chain, this intuition doesn't fail, uh, uh, although it could, you can't easily establish analytically what the relationship between the contact matrix and, and the distance matrix is. Um, there was an observation uh, a couple of years ago, I think, uh, again, from Jarvis Lev, that Shura, in fact, uh, alluded to this morning, that it's an empirical observation that the probability of contact between two loci separated by genomic distance I minus J scales as a power law, inverse as a power law, with an unusual exponent that, 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 that one, not, one has not seen in polymer physics. Um, so in order for us to try to understand these enormous diversity in measurements, and in fact, if you consider this density, uh, this is a distribution of the distances between two loci, where the genomic distance is exactly the same, and these are all from this experiment in, 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 uh, published this year, uh, you can see that the distributions, they do overlap, but there's some uh, great differences which you would not expect based upon uh, homogeneous uh, population of, uh, of uh, in a homopolymer. Mostly, and most always, the high C readouts are quite consistent uh, with uh, this distant maps that you measure from uh, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in fish experiments, but there are several exceptions. And I believe these exceptions would grow more, and this intrinsically is related to heterogeneity. And, and that's what we wanted to actually address and calculate. So this is a measurement of the cumulative distance function, uh, which, is in, which is simply an integral of the distance distribution. Uh, 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 and once you know that, and uh, for example, if you take this and integrate this, you would get stuff like this. Uh, here are the high C contact frequencies. So larger guys are as predictably at a shorter distance. But if you look at them very closely, there are curves, which means there are pairs of loci that have high high C readout, but in fact are further than they ought to be based upon our feeling uh, that, that there should be a correlation uh, between uh, 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 the distance, average distance, and the contact probability. So how does one actually think about this? We had already, our paper was already under review when this, this was brought to attention by reviewer three, uh, and, and reviewer three insisted that in fact we address this problem. Although I must say that uh, this paper was uh, on archive since 2017, it turns out, and eventually appeared just a little while ago. Um, the theory we attempted to do was uh, based upon something that Joe Bringelson uh, who is well known to few people in this audience, um, and, and, and I constructed uh, for, as a simple model for a physical gel about 23 years ago. The gist of the model is that you consider a polymer chain and you take any two monomers uh, at random and insist that they're in contact, and they're, they're physical gels, which means that the contacts can form and break on some time scales, just like you have in chromatin. Um, that was a completely randomly cross-linked, and we know that uh, chromosome, the, the contacts, even though they're very dynamic, are not randomly cross-linked, but nevertheless, uh, we could easily generalize that model. That model, even if you consider that the polymers, the Rouse chain, is not exactly soluble, for reasons that I don't want, want to get into, and therefore, if you order, if you make it suitable for applications to chromosomes, it still remains uh, not exactly soluble, but it, it can get very precise results with simple numerics. So the model is uh, a generalized Rouse model, if you want, and of course, you can do this for a self-forwarding chain as well, or any other polymer model that you can conceive of that you think would, is appropriate for describing chromosomes. So you're given these readouts, for example, from areas of, uh, experiments on some specific chromosomes, and then you know that there are loop anchors uh, that form mediated by CTCF, which he described in great detail yesterday. Once you have this model, you can do basically some polymer theory and actually establish a relationship between this contact matrix and the distance matrix. Uh, and, and, and you might be tempted to apply that to understand the kinds of experiments uh, that Ms. Tully, for example, reported this year. If you assume that the population is homogeneous, that means the contact that is formed is present in every single cell, then this will not reproduce experiments. And because of the heterogeneous nature of 
uh, interactions, there are these contacts are preserved only in a few of the cells, some small fraction cells, we say. And the objective is to determine what fraction there is and how do you use this theory to actually calculate stuff. I will not tell you much about this, um, but here are a pair of loci. Uh, on the left-hand side, the genomic distance is about three megabase pairs, and the right-hand side is about 13 megabase pairs, and these are all from this high-throughput, uh, uh, high-C, uh, uh, high-throughput high uh, imaging uh, combined with high-C of the kind that we already know a lot about, thanks to Erase's talk yesterday. And if you, and the orange lines are, are the theoretical predictions based upon this generalized uh, model, uh, uh, and, 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 the, and the blue lines uh, are, are the CDFs that is measured in the experiments by, 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 uh, by, by Thomas Tilly. And so the agreement is really terrific, um, and, and there are essentially no parameters, and I can tell you what essentially no parameters means later. Um, uh, and, and if you notice, it, this genomic distance is sh shorter than this, which would imply that this mean distance should be closer, but the opposite is the case, and the opposite is the case as a result of the fact that you have high heterogeneous populations. Missile and company, in fact, reported these sorts of measurements for about 212 pairs, and of course, the data is available uh, in, in some supplement information of some kind, and in fact, you could then use the same theory to calculate uh, all the 212 uh, base pairs, and 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 uh, and and we can explain the apparent violations between the fish uh, experiments and 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 high C because the contacts are not present in, uh, in all the cells. Okay, and and uh, these are the calculated distributions of distances for about 212 base pairs, and uh, and if you integrate these guys, you'll get the CDCF. There's not much you can make out of this uh, uh, except that. Uh, uh, the, the graph that I showed you in the first, that the CDC for all these two 12 pairs could be calculated very easily from integrating these curves. On the right-hand side, you see the variations in the mean distances uh, uh, with respect to the mean, and you can see there is considerable variation in the mean distances, which means that the object, uh, the chromosome, uh, and I think this is 18, uh, they did three chromosomes, on, uh, 11 being the other one, uh, and two, I think, are the others. Uh, there are considerable fluctuations in, 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 uh, in, in the organization, the structures, and, and, and that, of course, is something that uh, we heard uh, from Peter uh, this um, afternoon and Jose this morning. The implications, therefore, would be that they also must manifest themselves in the dynamics, and that's what I want to Next. So I'm going to uh, give you a heuristic model and, and, and develop that a little further, and I don't think I'll have time beyond that to tell you more detailed models that we have developed along the lines of the polymer models that we heard about uh, today, but ours is, is, is a bit different. The, the argument that, 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 that we thought about uh, uh, about five, six years ago is that if you look at these chromosome territories, and we saw the spaghetti pictures, and then you think of yourself as one of the locusts uh, in, in that, uh, then, then you would in, be surrounded by a sea of such loci, and your movement will be into first approximation, uh, kind of like reptation. Uh, uh, and that's the argument that, 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 that we would want to make. So the rotation time would be uh, uh, scales as n to the n cubed, and this is the Jan's prediction. Um, and consequently, you could estimate for base pairs in various genomes what the time scales ought to be, at least the ratio of the time scales. And you find that the human rotation time scale, and I'm not saying these time scales are in fact even relevant or real, but it's just an argument, is, is about 100,000 uh, 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 more than what it would be for, say, East. So if this time scale exceeds the cell doubling time, and it kind of does not actually, um, uh, 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 then it, although it's hours, uh, many hours for the human cells, then you would argue that at least on the majority of the 
uh, a lifetime of the interface, the, the, the uh, dynamics ought to be sluggish, and the dynamics can be, in fact, quite varied. Um, and these sorts of ideas in the context of polymer collapse and the more recently in the context of chromosomes uh, have been uh, discussed elsewhere. So the question is, is the human cell under non-equilibrium uh, uh, control uh, or, or under equilibrium? And then I want to show you some simple-minded calculation. So this is a heuristic argument. Um, and this kind of calculation could have been done long, long ago. Um, and what one imagines is you imagine that this is your chromosome, although this is not what we had in mind at the time, and it's confined to a sphere. Now, the radius of the sphere, there, and if this is a self voiding walk, there are only two length scales in the problem, namely the size of the, of the polymer itself and, and, and the size of the sphere. This, these two length scales will define a volume fraction, which is just a radius of gyration of this polymer divided by the volume it's got available to explore, the cubed, and that's a variable that you can change to see how slow or fast the dynamics is. So you keep squeezing this. Uh, um, uh, you're good. Yeah. Um, you squeeze this guy, and then you can. Uh, I'll show you. There's a crossover around 0 0.4 or 0.45 when the dynamics is so sluggish that it would not relax on any reasonable time scale uh, for for any reasonable value of n. Um, so I'll come back to this later. So, so the, the, we chose n equal to 300, and of course, that's hardly a genome. But then we know post facto how to do finite size analysis to figure out what the numbers ought to be for very large values of n. This is the contact probability as a genomic distance for these guys. And as you increase the volume fraction from nothing, this is free, to about 0.4, you can see that the exponents, uh, there's a scale dependent variation in this exponent. And at some point, in fact, you get this fractal kind of behavior that Shura Grosberg and Nishev and Eugene Shachnowitz talked about long, long ago in a completely different context. And not surprisingly, of course, uh, there is also accompanying order when you squeeze this because of these things have to be packed properly and, and you can see the emergence of that at 0 0.402. Um, so what we are interested in is the relaxation time along with a given bead, for example, sample its own, uh, 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 the size of the polymer or on that length scale. And so to calculate that, that uh, 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 we computed uh, the the structure factor, uh, which is just a two-point correlation uh, uh, in terms of time, uh, at some wave vector. So if you plot that as a function of reduced time, as you squeeze this, the dynamics get slower and slower and slower, such that at very high volume fraction, in fact, it relaxes uh, very slowly, but not exponentially, with a stretching exponential. And that stretch exponential the value of beta is plotted as a function of the volume fraction, and, and you can see it decreases. And in fact, if you take larger polymers and squeeze it more, you can drive beta arbitrarily to smaller numbers, even of the order 0.1. These simulations are done with a very small chain, and we want to know what will happen when that chain length goes to infinity or gigabase pairs or whatever. And so you rescale those relaxation time uh, with respect to uh, just n at a zero volume fraction as a function of volume fraction. And, and, and then if you recognize that you must expect some sort of a power law, uh, this is sort of what should happen, uh, then you can scale all of this time fairly well, uh, not tremendously accurately, to a power law with an, with an exponent that's of the order of two thirds. But this, is, this only holds good for n equals 300, and, and so we want to do something about finite size of flights. So you repeat these sorts of calculations, not for larger values of n, because the relaxation time will be even prohibitively larger. So for smaller values of n, and then you make an answer that there has to be power law corrections that scales as new prime. And then when you do that, you can actually obtain, by fitting this to this curve, what the uh, value of the critical volume fraction above which the dynamics is essentially uh, 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 extremely slow would be, and that number turns out to be about 0 0.4, 0 0.45, something like that. And you can, in fact, know what those finite size corrections are. Now, because we know these numbers, um, so we can figure out uh, 
uh, what the fee should be. These are all estimates, for example, bacteria uh, to viruses, and you can see in the humans that we are sort of interested in at this, in this talk, the volume fraction ranges from 0.3 to 0.5, and so which means some chromosomes may in fact relax quite rapidly, whereas others may not, and, and, and certainly viruses, uh, uh, we, 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 we predict uh, their genome uh, relaxation time would be essentially infinite. Okay, so that's the heuristic argument that led us to think that the dynamics had to be uh, uh, ought to be um, uh, sluggish. Uh, okay. Strict five minutes, right? Go ahead. Okay. So, all right. All right. Um, so, I'm going to run through this extremely rapidly, uh, and, 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 and this is a talk in its own right, but I just want to point out that long before the uh, high C experiments existed, there were a number of uh, uh, people who applied polymer physics ideas, including Shura, in fact, but even before Shura uh, in understanding some organization of the genome. These are pretty old uh, approaches, but, uh, but with, the, uh, with the very important paper in 2009, which was his PhD thesis, uh, erased the, 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 the field got a major kick, and, and, and a lot of uh, people have gotten involved in this. I'm not going to tell you about this uh, model, except for one thing. So the model is... Uh, uh, Essentially, a uh, 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 bead on a string. It only considers, uh, uh, con uh, considers portion of the genome, uh, with each bead corresponding about uh, 1,200 kilobases. The size is about 70 nanometers, and uh, uh, the loop anchor positions uh, we learned from uh, for various chromosomes from uh, from arrays. And then the, the question is, uh, how do we choose those various two energy scales in the problem? The two energy scales in the problem are the interactions between uh, the green and the red, and the uh, uh, red and the red, uh, and the green and the green. For convenience, and because I'm allowed to choose an energy scale, I basically said these two interactions are the same. And then we appeal, and we know that you saw this AB compartments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we uh, appeal to Flory Huggins theory, which says uh, under what conditions would you have microphase separation, and that's that, that, that leads to this inequality. As long as this inequality is satisfied, these, this polymer, uh, when, you, when you try to find out its conformations, would phase separate with uh, uh, producing the checkerboard patterns, and also, uh, without asking, it turns out, uh, um, uh, uh, the tag structures. I think that I, have, I don't have a lot of time here, so I'll show you uh, one thing, um, and, 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 and that is that the model is, is just as good, uh, in fact, we made quantitative comparisons in analyzing these large matrices uh, uh, to s assess how good this model is in reproducing uh, high C uh, data for about half a dozen uh, chromosomes, uh, but, and, and you can even uh, obtain the stat structures, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe uh, in the theme of uh, uh, talking about uh, large fluctuations, uh, uh, let, me, let me show you two things. Uh, one is that the, the shape fluctuations of these tags with sizes range from about 200 to uh, 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 about 2,000, say, kilobase pairs. And if they're large, uh, then they behave like uh, uh, prolate ellipsoids, maybe something like that. Uh, um, uh, 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 I mean, like spheres, when they're small, uh, they, uh, they behave like prolate ellipsoids. So these would correspond to these, and these correspond uh, to this kind of structures. The point is that when you examine these guys, there are a considerable number of fluctuations in, in, at all length scales, including the length scale of the tags. So um, how good, uh, there are additional comparisons one can make. Uh, you can calculate the radius of gyration of these tags, and they are in like 0.2 microns to about 0.4 or so, and this is a tad, and you obtain this unusual scaling that it goes as L to the power of 0.27. On the right-hand side of the experiments from Javi's lab, and for the three guys and the, and the exponents are not canonical at all. Uh, in fact, for this uh, uh, completely repressed case, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's extremely small, not at all polymer-like. And so this tells you something with the organization on the length scales, on very small length scales that we have no uh, really good understanding of what, what's going on. So I'm going to try to show you one, uh, uh, one, one thing uh, uh, that is uh, going back uh, 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 to our chromosome 21 work. Uh, this is a different paper, I think. It's in science. Uh, these are some of the uh, 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 super resolution images. 
that we use to convert the so-called distant matrix. I don't have time to tell you about that. It's, it's already described in any event. And you can see there is really very little correlation, which you can measure by Pearson correlation coefficients. Uh, for chromosome 10, uh, no two uh, coding called cell-like uh, guys uh, 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 overlap. The, the, the overlap is very small, so it is in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in chromosome 21. I'm going to um, yeah, maybe, I, I wanted to tell you that there's a very nice paper by Andy uh, Spakovitz that where you can calculate some of these uh, dynamics associated with uh, 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 various uh, uh, extent of motion uh, observed in experiment. Some of the lower side move fast, some of them slow, some of them extremely confined. These are all reminiscent of things associated with glass. These are comparisons to the experiment. And I want to show you one last thing. Um, uh, and, and this is related to the use of ideas that, that, that uh, uh, Peter, Ted, and I, uh, uh, in fact, proposed a long, long time ago uh, to calculate multiple correlation functions uh, that tell you the length scales and the time scales in which you observe coherent motion. And, and this is not dissimilar to what uh, Alexander showed, and, 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 and these are the time scales. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here, uh, really, and, 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 and tell you that the, that the uh, extraordinary diversity uh, in, in the, in the uh, structural organization uh, and its dynamics uh, exhibit uh, uh, is translated into sluggish dynamics. And in the process, has also given rise to some interesting questions um, in polymer theory, which, 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 to the best of my knowledge, have never really been seen in any standard models. And so, this, these, these, these uh, uh, chromatin structures uh, are, 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 yes, they're polymers, but there are lots of other things going on. And of course, I've not even come anywhere close to biology, uh, where, where there are additional uh, both physical and biological processes that will continue to shape our thinking. Thanks very much. I think we have time really for only one question. Make it good. Oh, Aries, this won't be good. <laughs> this gentleman. Uh, about uh, the last slides that you very quickly pass, uh, can you explain uh, what is the time scale of this uh, dynamic uh, in terms of uh, maybe even in uh, frequency domain or in real time? And second, how you distinguish uh, this so-called uh, coherent motion and from uncoherent motion? How you distinguish experimentally? Well, I, um, the first question is, uh, motions and time scales are of the order of one second to about 10 minutes or longer and, and, and maybe about half hour or so that we can actually estimate and five Peter was telling us about 10 hours from, from these kinds of simulations. The, there, are, there are standard ways in which you can uh, 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 get it uh, coherent and incoherent motions all involving the structure factors and in principle these high resolution imaging experiments which are tracking individual a locus can actually be used to construct those uh, order parameters to get at uh, what kinds of emotions you have on what lens scales, whether coherent or not. So these will have to wait some new experiments. Okay, so let's thank Dave one more time.